Hello everyone and welcome back to Cobian History. Today we are going to talk about the Iron Age in Britain and this will be the last episode in this season of the History of Britain series. But I'll talk more about uh, what will happen after this episode at the end of the video. So for right now we will just jump right into the video. The British Iron Age started when we first started seeing the significant use of iron tools and weapons and it lasted until the Romanization of the southern half of the island. The people that inhabited Great Britain during this time were the Britons, also known as Celtic Britons or Ancient Britons. They lived in tribes and are often considered part of the Celtic culture, but this isn't quite accurate as Celtic is a linguistic term referring to the languages that were spoken in Great Britain and also in other parts of Europe at that time. The part of the Celtic language tree that was spoken in Britain were the Britonic languages. Common Britonic, which might have been different languages at that time and later evolved into one universal language, was spoken south of the river Firth of Forth, and Pictish was spoken north of the river. So as I mentioned earlier, these languages belong to the Britonic languages, which belong to the Celtic language groups, which makes these languages related with the Gaulish spoken in Gaul and Godelic spoken in Ireland. And even though their languages are related, Brythonic culture was a thing on its own and there was no cultural unity connecting the Britons with the other Celtic people groups. The Iron Age can be split up into five subdivisions and during this video we will go through them in order. Starting at the earliest Iron Age which is considered to be between 800 BC and 600 BC and this is kind of a transitional period between the Bronze Age and the Iron Age. The Late Bronze Age and the Earliest Iron Age saw new developments in the Brythonic societies and extensive field systems were created, as well as settlements that became more permanent and built to make better use of the land. They had the capacity to implement these developments for a long time before this though. But in previous ages their focus had been more on their beliefs and they used their resources and manpower to build large ceremonial structures like Stonehenge. Their focus now changed and they strived towards new economic and social goals, such as developing better ways of taming the land as well as the animals they had. So they could have a surplus of food and resources which they could then use for trade. Long ditches that went on for miles were also discovered. These are thought to be territorial boundaries and indicate that people desire to increase their control over a vast area of land. Animals also became more valuable during this time and the most common domesticated animals were cattle and sheep but we have also found evidence that they kept pigs, dogs and sometimes chickens as well. Surprisingly, there is only a minor amount of archaeological evidence regarding the remains of hunted game and wild species, as well as fish and other aquatic species, even in coastal areas. This indicates that the people of this time heavily relied on their livestock in contrast to previous ages such as the Bronze Age and the Neolithic where even though they already farmed, they also relied on a more hunter-gatherer lifestyle in addition to agriculture. Since the start of the British Iron Age, Great Britain became closely tied to continental Europe, especially the south and east of England had ties with the continent. We can see this through the appearance of new weapon types that are made in the same style as those on the continent. It is also thought that around this time Phoenician traders began to visit Great Britain in search of minerals. These Phoenicians brought goods with them from the Mediterranean, bringing the Britonic people in contact with new items that were previously unknown to them. A bit later in the early Iron Age, between 600 BC and 400 BC, we see an increase in goods being imported from the mainland. And this would have a big influence on the Iron Age art that we find in Britain. This time also saw the rise of big defensive structures such as hill forts. A few examples of some well-known hill forts are Maiden Castle in Dorset, Cadbury Castle in Somerset, and Danebury in Hampshire. 
They first appeared in Wessex during the Late Bronze Age, but only became common between 550 and 400 BC. Some of these hill forts were permanently settled and others only seasonally, or used as an assembly place for the people living around it. In general, the presence of a hill fort indicated a great accumulation of wealth and a higher standard of living. In the Middle Iron Age, between 400 BC and 100 BC, hill forts might have served as communal centers used for markets and social events, and we see a significant growth in population and the emergence of regional identities. These common identities formed tribes, and they had quite a few of them in Britain. The names of the tribes were only given in later centuries by the Romans, so we don't know what the Britons called each other. But some of the tribe names given by the Romans still survive in some form or another to this day. For example, the Cantiaci or Cantiae, labelled by Julius Caesar as most civilized of the tribes, lived in the area of modern-day Kent. Kent being derived from their name, and their capital was named De Rovernum Cantiacorum, which evolved in the city we now call Canterbury. Another example is Devon, which is name derives from the tribe Demnoniae. The Demnoniae tribe also had a sub-tribe, being the Cornoviae, the people of the Horn, which is where Cornwall gets its name from. And it's not only location names that derive from these tribe names. In the geologic timescale, the Ordovician and Silurian were named after the tribes Ordovices and Silurius that inhabited the area in which the rocks of these time periods were found. The Belgae were a tribe that lived in modern-day Belgium and northern France, and they also came to control a part of southern Britain when they emigrated to the area between the mid-2nd century BC and 50 BC. During the Late Iron Age, between 100 BC and 50 BC, the Britonic people continued to develop their social structures and economy. We can see the expansion of their economy through the large amounts of Iron Age coins that we can find in Britain. There were different types of coins, such as gold or silver staters. This type of coin originated in ancient Greece, but made its way throughout Europe and were imported to Britain from the mainland. Another type of coin, the potten, was common in the southeast of Britain. These were made from a base metal alloy, which was typically a mixture of copper, tin and lead. These coins were based on Roman coins, the billon to be specific. Meanwhile, in the southeast there were a lot of imported gold coins from the Belgae tribe that immigrated to the area. The latest Iron Age starts around the time of Caesar's first expedition to Britain, around 50 BC, and lasted to about 100 AD. Because the Britons did not have a written language, the accounts of the Romans during their expeditions give us a better idea of the people of Britain. Caesar's account tells us about the Druids. These were the priests of the Prithonic people and were a religious elite thought to have had magical powers. The religion of the Britons was generally practiced in natural settings in the open air, and they revolved around offerings and sacrifices, sometimes even human sacrifices, but most of the time it would be the ritual slaughter of animals instead. During this time there are thought to have been about 3 to 4 million Britons, with the average life expectancy at birth being around 25 years old. This was due to the high child mortality rate, and because of that if you were lucky enough to reach 5 years old, your life expectancy would be around 30 years old. This was slightly lower for women, due to the high mortality rate of young women that would occur during childbirth. But later in the Iron Age, as warfare increases, especially in the south, the life expectancy for men and women balanced out to be roughly the same. As the Romans conquered Britain, the native defences and hill forts proved to be little use against a concentrated Roman attack, and the integration of Britain into the Roman Empire was relatively quick. At the end of the Iron Age, Roman campaigns were still going on in the north of Britain, 
but in the south we already saw the construction of Romano-British shrines and Roman villas. So that was it for this season of History of Britain. The next season will cover the Romanization of Britain and how life in Britain was under the Romans. I haven't planned out yet when this new season will premiere as I still have to write all the scripts for the episodes, but I would imagine it to be a few months. So during that time I will still upload videos in the weekends, but that will allow me to focus on some different topics before jumping back into the British history series. I hope you've enjoyed, let me know your thoughts in the comments below and I will see you in my next video. Goodbye.